Hello, this is Maggie. Today I'm doing the chart of great astrologer Robert Hand. Um, yeah, I'm almost intimidated doing his chart because he's such a master astrologer. He was born to a family of astrologers. I believe his father may have been an astrologer. He founded Astrolab. He wrote the software for Astrodeans. He um, is a prolific writer a scientist, <clears throat> researcher, um, but my favorite book, I carried it around, like the Bible was Planets in Transit and Planets in Composite. So um, he's just world-renowned, res respected astrologer. So anyway, Robert Hand, I'll just look at his chart. Robert Hand was born, um, Mars born, December 5th, 1942. Uh, his father was an astrologer in, I think it was New Jersey? Plainfield, New Jersey in the U.S. So, yeah, let me get to it. So Robert is Sagittarius, which explains why he's so big on publishing. He has a loaded Sagittarius house, too. Six house of work. I'm jumping right to it, I know. <clears throat> but he has the sun, Mercury, planet of communication, publishing, and Venus. He loves writing, working, publishing, researching. And those are in opposition to his Saturn and Uranus. So... I just jumped to that because it just jumped right out at me. But it, his his chart is kind of like a bowl shape, you know, a bowl shaped. All the planets are sort of on the lower hemisphere. So he is a Sagittarius, Cancer ascendant. Gives him a Jupiter first house in Cancer. So that just gives him a lot of depth. Depth. And he is a teacher. He's a great teacher. He's my greatest teacher, both him and Dane Redger, my greatest teachers. So Jupiter and Jupiter with, you know, Cancer rising gave him, Cancer ascendant, gave him enormous sensitivity and um, intuition and depth. So it expanded, you know, his good fortune and his wisdom. And those are sextile to his moon in Scorpio. There it is. Yeah, his moon in Scorpio and Mars in Scorpio as well. So moon, Mars, moon conjunct Mars in Scorpio is ex very, very strong intuition <clears throat> and you know, his, his relationships must be interesting as well, and his children as well. But Moon Mars wants depth. And so for fun, you know, he does research and writing and publishing. I, I think last I checked out, he was doing some Hellenic, Hellenic uh, ancient texts, you know, decoding them. I mean, just... Yeah, just, uh, it's extremely high, high intelligence. And that's his Sagittarius sign. They are, as a rule, very future-oriented, optimistic, and um, intelligent. And so having Sun, Mercury, the planet of communication, and Venus, he loves, loves, loves writing, researching, because they're in opposition to Uranus, that's astrology. He writes about astrology. He's a master teacher, Sagittarius, um, of astrology. He wrote the software, founded Astrolab, um, and wrote Astrodeans and won all kinds of awards. And, you know, is one of the most noted scholars in, a, in modern day astrology. So that's his Uranus. Um, in Gemini, in Gemini. So that's, you know, he's communicating and it's supposed to his Mercury, Sun, and Venus. So 
that's his astrology mark, um, as well as his very, very strong intuition, you know, with his Cancer Ascendant and his, his Moon, Moon Mars trine. Mars is the ruler of Scorpio, so he has a beautiful trine, you know, with his water to see depth. He also has a trine between Neptune and Libra, fourth house, and uh, Uranus. <laughs> so that's interesting. Fourth house, he was born to a, a, not, not a family of astrologers, but yeah, he started learning astrology, I believe, when he was 18. His father was already an astrologer, so he was a master, you know, at a very young age, I believe. Um, yeah, so... <laughs> So I'm a little intimidated looking at his chart, but of course he would have that on Astro, Astro Dienst. Um, but the first thing that jumped out is the publishing, the ex extremely strong intuition that he has, the depth perception. The Saturn is just hard work. I mean, he he's hard work at his astrology. The Uranus is, is his astrology. So he's either writing, Saturn would be research, he loves research, um, and teaching, and structure, you know, just digging into ancient texts, that would be Saturn structure. And it's in his 12th house. It's in his, Saturn's in his 12th house. So he, um, is a master teacher. He's a master teacher and a master at publishing, communication. That's the opposition to Mercury, and he, and he loves doing it. And he's internationally acclaimed because it's in Sagittarius. So uh, in Sagittarius rules, writing, publishing. And he also has first house Jupiter, which is the ruler of Sagittarius in Cancer. So um, that helps him with, you know, the writing, publishing, researching. Um, and Jupiter is trining his Mars. I probably already talked about that. And uh, Pluto, his Pluto, second house Pluto in Leo. And that's your asset, your money, material, gain. Um, is trining all his stellium in Sagittarius in the sixth house of work. So he makes money through his work, which he absolutely loves, publishing, uh, writing software, founding Astrolab, uh, doing charts, you know, clients. Um, yeah, just uh, pretty, pretty amazing, pretty amazing. So he has Uranus is conjunct Saturn. So Uranus is in the 11th house. The 11th house is, is astrology's house. <coughs> it's the Aquarian house. And Uranus is the ruler of Aquarius. So he has it. That's the mark of an astrologer. And Saturn in the 12th house is depth, research, um, hard work, and most of his planets, though, he appears to maybe be sort of, a, in, although he's such a prolific writer and researcher, intellectual, um, because most of his planets are sort of in a bowl in the lower hemisphere by the IC, it can tend to make one a little more introverted. Although his writing and his publishing is, is that's the main thing that's, you know, out. However, Saturn's in the 12th house. That's kind of hidden. So he may like to work. Of course, if you're a writer, you need some solitude and interior time to look within and write, you know. So he, he, need, he would need that to write and to bring forth his intuition and, you know, interpretive skills and to pass those on to others. So, but the Uranus is in the 11th house of, you know, of Aquarius. So he was born an astro astrologer, 
to an astrolog <laughs> astrologer's family, and he makes money through astrology. Uh, Taurus is in the eleventh house, the sign, and his MC is Pisces. Is it Pisces? Yeah, <laughs> his MC Midheaven is Pisces, tenth house. So. Um, that's his intuition and his depth, his depth perception. So he made a career um, using his intuition. He has the sun and conjunct the moon. So they, they, um, he probably spends so much time publishing and writing and researching that, you, you know, the moon Moon Mars is a part, the nurturing part of it himself, that it's kind of like a blind spot, you know, of your personality, that it's kind of either or, one or the other. Um, I'm sure he could explain this much better than I. Uh, yeah, so his Neptune, fourth house, Libra, fourth house, Libra, so that's like a receptor. A receptor. Um, oh, and his north node, of course, I have to look at his north node. He's in the third house of Gemini. Ge well, it's not in Gemini, it's actually in uh, is it Virgo. Let me just make sure. Mean node. Leo. It's in Leo. It's in Leo, but it's in the third house. It's kind of like on the cusp. Oh, he is very, very um, famous. <laughs> he's absolutely famous. You know, he's won all kinds of awards. So he, he was meant to be famous as a writer, a publisher, because it's in the third house of communication. So through his work, this enormous body of work, that's uh, Virgo and Leo. You know, he's got Virgo in the third house, but his north node is in Leo. And it's in the third house. So that's the third house of Gemini. So he's, again, that's communication. He uses his gr enormous communication skills to interpret charts and to you know, write books and publish and uh, probably speak, speaking engagements and, um, yeah, just amazing, amazing man, very well respected. So he's, he's I was going to say he's all fire. His predominant elements are fire and water. So are mine. <laughs> fire and water. He has no earth. Neither do I. Uh, well, I have Chiron up in the MC, up in the, uh, Capricorn on the MC, but his MC is Pisces. So again, that's using his intuition, uh, emotional depth, and intuition and sensitivity to see. And he has Saturn in Pisces twelfth house, so he he's able to communicate his perceptions to other people, and he does it with such precision and skill that people are able to learn from him. He's a great teacher, great teacher. So in fire, he has Pluto, the North Node, in Leo. So he's powerful. He's very powerful and famous, and he makes money through his astrology because, yeah, they're they are sextiling his Uranus. That's an easy-flowing 60-degree aspect, so they get along together. So he uses his Uranus, and you know that's how he makes money. He's a very famous, famous, uh, you name it. I mean, he's just won so many awards. So, so he's li lived out his North Node. Uh, and is famous for his astrology. That's the sextile to Uranus. Uranus is the astrology. The North Node is communication about it through his work, his body of work. And Pluto is uh, Pluto. He, he's can be obsessive and just you know he makes money through his obsession with astrology, which is what you know we all as as astrologers love.
to do. And he loves doing it. Um, yeah, he loves his work, absolutely, because his Venus is in the sixth house, along with the stellium of uh, Mercury and the Sun and Sagittarius. So he's very visionary, forward-thinking, um, and skilled at what he does. So he has car car no, I'm <clears throat> sorry, fixed fire that's in Leo, second house, and mutable fire is Sagittarius. Three planets in mutable fire, Sagittarius. And air, he has Neptune in Libra, that's generational, fourth house, uh, make him very perceptive, uh, receptive to, you know, his family. Family tradition of astrology, that is so cool. And Saturn and Uranus as well in, in, uh, in air, in Gemini. Gemini. So he uses his... The ideas must come to him so like lightning fast because Uranus is original, creative, um, unusual... And, you know, it's the ruler of astrology. It's the ruler of the 11th house along with Saturn. So he has both both Aquarius rulers up there in his 11th and 12th houses. So that, that's his astrological signature as well. But foremost, he's really a writer, publisher, communicator, uh, teacher, astrologer, you name it. Uh, writing software would be as Uranus as well because Uranus rules electronics. Uh, yeah, so, so that's his, uh, his air, but it's very, very, very strong air for an astrologer, very, very powerful air. His water is his intuition, his depth, perception. Jupiter, first house in Cancer, very deep. And the ascendant cancer, very, very intuitive and wise, very wise, because he is a teacher. Jupiter is the ruler of Sagittarius, so he is a teacher, and he teaches his uh, with great emotional depth and intuition. So he's predominantly fire and water with, with air. Thankfully, the air is what helped him to, you know, become a great astrologer and publish as well and teach. Um, so his water is Jupiter, the Ascendant, so he leads with that. Moon, Mars, and Scorpio, more depth, enormous fixed depth. He, it's what he likes to do. He likes to, Mars is the ruler of Scorpio and the Moon, so he likes uh, depth emotional depth as well in relationships. So um, love affairs, children, relationship, creativity. So he has fun with his creativity, going to great emotional depth, um, expressing himself in self-expression. It's Leo's house. Um, and MC, his MC's in water as well, the midheaven in Pisces. So his intuition is exceptionally, exceptionally strong. Yeah, I like that. All fire and water and air, no earth. So he doesn't need earth. <laughs> he doesn't need earth, you know. He can, he can let people code and do all that stuff, you know. He just, he's an idea person um, and a great teacher. So anyway, I hope I did him a little bit of justice. Um, Again, it was rather intimidating doing his chart. He does have a lot of trines. Um, but <clears throat> I don't have time to go into all his aspects. His Chiron, where's his Chiron? His Chiron is in Leo. Is it? I should quit while I'm ahead. 29 degrees Leo. Yeah, so... Um, Anyway, I'm going to end this, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.